Could asteroid strikes cause mass extinctions on Earth? Are devastating impacts predictable or are they random? That's the question researchers are posing. This is on The Wire by Sana Alwark and Matthias Meyer. Scientists have spent decades asking whether asteroids, comets, hit the Earth at regular intervals. We have various asteroid impacts found all over the world. At the same time, a few studies have found evidence that the large extinction events on Earth, such as the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, repeat themselves every 26 to 30 million years. Given that there is good evidence that an asteroid triggered the dinosaur extinction, it makes sense to ask whether showers of asteroids could be to blame for regular extinction events. The question is very important, and if we could prove that this is the case, then we might be able to predict and even prevent asteroids causing mass extinctions in the future. We've tried to find out the answer, and today there are approximately 190 impact craters from asteroids and comets on the Earth, anywhere from Canada to Australia. They range in size from only a few meters to more than 100 kilometers across, and they formed anywhere between a few hundred, a few years ago to more than two billion years ago. Only a few, like the famous meteor crater in Arizona, are visible to the untrained eye, but scientists have learned to recognize impact craters even if they're covered by lakes, the ocean, or thick layers of sediment. But have these craters formed as a result of regular asteroid collisions? And if so, why? There have been many suggestions, but most prominently some scientists have suggested that the Sun has a companion star called Nemesis, or Planet X, or Planet 10, or Wormwood, or Nibiru, whatever you want to call it, on the very wide orbit which approaches the solar system every 26 million to 30 million years, and thereby triggers showers of comets. I guess uh, they mean to say here that it uh, brings a, a, a set of uh, planets or celestial bodies with it. Nemesis would be a red-brown dwarf star, but we have a brown dwarf star at the edge of our solar system already. NASA has confirmed that two years ago. Anyway, going back to this article, Nemesis would be a red-brown dwarf star, a faint type of star, orbiting the sun at a distance of about 1.5 light years. It's not an impossible idea, since the majority of stars actually belong to systems with more than one star. However, despite searching for it for decades, astronomers have failed to observe it and they think they uh, can now exclude its existence. Then there's the difficult dating aspect of this. The idea of periodic impacts persists. There are other suggestions. One idea is based on the observation that the Sun moves up and down slightly as it orbits the galaxy, crossing the galactic disk every 30 million years or so. Some have suggested that this could somehow trigger comet showers. But is there any evidence that asteroid impacts occur at regular intervals? Most research so far has failed to show this, but that does not mean it is not the case. It's tricky getting the statistics right. There's a lot of variables involved, craters disappear as they age, and some are never found in the first place as they are on the ocean floor. Rocks from some periods are easier to find than others, and determining the ages of the craters is very difficult. A recent study claimed to have found evidence of periodicity, but the crater age data is used including many craters with poorly known or even incorrect and outdated ages. The methods used to determine age based on radioactivity decay or looking at microscopic fossils with known ages are continuously improved by scientists. Therefore, today, the age of an impact event can be improved significantly from an initial analysis made, say, 10 or 20 years ago. Another problem involves impacts that have nearly identical ages with exactly the same uncertainty in age, known as clustered ages. The age of an impact crater may be, for example, 65.5 plus or minus 0.5 million years, while another may be 66.1 
plus or minus 0 0.5 million years. So in this case, both craters might have the same true age of 65.8 million years. Such craters have in some instances been produced by impacts of asteroids accompanied by small moons or by asteroids that broke up in the Earth's atmosphere. The double impact craters they produce can make it look like they hit a time when there were lots of uh, asteroid impacts when actually the craters were formed in the same event. In some cases, clustered impact craters are spaced too far apart to be explained as double impacts. So how could we explain them? The occasional collision of asteroids in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter might trigger short-lived showers, quote-unquote, of asteroids impacting the Earth. Only a few of these showers are necessary to lead to the false impression of period periodicity. Then there's another fresh approach. In contrast to previous studies, we restricted our statistical analysis to 22 impact craters with very well-defined ages from the past 260 million years. In fact, these have all, age, have, uh, all have ages uncertainties of less than 0.8%, and we accounted for impacts with clustered ages. Our article, recently published Monday, Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, monthly, shows that, to the best of our current knowledge, asteroid impacts do not happen at regular intervals. They seem to occur randomly. Of course, we can't be sure that there isn't any periodicity, but the good news is that, as more impact craters are dated with robust ages, the statistical analysis we did can be repeated over and over again if there is such a pattern, and it should become visible at some point. That means that there is presently no way to predict when a large asteroid collision may once, once again threaten life on Earth, but when it does, it comes to facing the apocalypse, maybe not knowing is not so bad after all. No news, no news is good news, as I say. I'll leave a link below for you for this on The Wire. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.